Tunnel Surfer Two By Scott Maddox Second part There is no one Do not believe you understand what is going on. When Butch was six, his parents were in a car accident. They just skidded off an icy patch of black ice, 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 terrible nuisance that winter. No one was hurt, but they'd been on their way to pick him up from school, and an hour and a half delay was a pretty big deal to the boy. Of course, his mom and dad were still shaken from the accident, and maybe weren't thinking quite straight. And Dad wound up chewing him out for the road. Black ice was a terrible nuisance that winter. No one was hurt, but they'd been on their way to pick him up from school, and maybe weren't thinking quite straight. And Dad wound up chewing him out for asking too many questions on their way home in a bar. Well, you know how kids are. Well, you know how kids. Well, you know how kids are. Well, you know how kids. Well, you know how kids are. Well, you know how he was pretty sure something was wrong. He vowed to himself right then and there to always be a good boy, so no one would know. That was so long ago, and so buried deep, Butch would probably not remember if you asked him. But from that day forward, he always did his chores, always got good grades, always did the right thing, 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 all to cover up an ancient guilt for a crime that never happened, the right thing, that never happened. And for most of his life, Butch couldn't not be good. That never happened, that never happened, that never happened, the right thing. Later, he put different grown-up words on it. He was responsible, devoted, dedicated, did the right thing, but deep, deep down, but deep, deep, deep down. But deep, deep down, did the right thing. And it never happened, it never happened, it never had the right thing. But deep, deep down, but deep, deep down, but deep, deep down. He was still telling himself he had to be a good boy, be the best little boy there ever was, and the right thing. But it never happened. Never happened. It never happened. The right thing. The right thing. But it never happened. Never happened. Never happened. So nothing like being left on the schoolyard curb for an hour and a half would ever happen again. Thing about coffee, he said, is that it was invented by the Sufis to induce the trance-like state the dervishes enter into as they spin. He swirled his cup, admiring the spiraling galaxy of misty crema on its surface, and quaffed the last of his double espresso. I firmly believe that this substance right right here, right here, has mystical properties. If only we knew or remembered how to prepare it, the right thing. The fire crackle punctuated the silence. I think you're loopy. But based on what we just saw in that cave, I'd say you were onto something. I say we get that map and find that so-called magic pot. Gretchen and Goblin Bob nodded their agreement, and the Believers Club toasted their newest quest with latte, espresso, mocha, and house blend right there in the coffee shop on the corner of Barnard and Main on the night before Groundhog Day. As Linda leaned with her head against the glass, the faces in the family portrait shop seemed to watch her. Chubby babies grinning, love-struck prom royalty, Three generation portraits all looking out with mild amusement. The glass was cool against her flesh, taking the edge off the sweltering savannah night, the night when Bobby had left her for her sister. She looked up. Something in the light, the reflection in the glass, the tears in her eyes had changed the portraits. Smiles were now leers, eyes were now hollow, and the baby was grasping for her throat. She gasped, stepped back. Nothing had changed. The photographs were evil. She gasped, stepped back. Nothing had changed. Those photographs were evil. The man, the wild-eyed Santa Claus man, the man in the booth behind me. The man, the wild-eyed Santa Claus man. He was clearly talking to himself. He, he was clearly talking to himself. John sat across from me, napkin doodling. Napkin doodling. As I nattered on. Nattered on, trying to kill the silences before that man's booming preacher voice could bell. I failed and flustered disgracefully. As I discoursed on the marital infidelities of my next-door neighbors, John suddenly half stood, leaned across the table, and showed his napkin over my shoulder to the man behind me, who fell silent, as did I. Helpless, I started up again in moments, never referring to the man or to John's unseemly behavior, but I snuck a peek at his napkin scribble. I see you, it said. 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 Click. 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 Ah, oh, yes, thanks, Harry. Hey, wait a minute. Thud, Harry, you didn't clean the ceiling fan like I asked, did you? Click. Thud, Harry! 
There's fucking dust bunnies in the wet paint, you imbecile. There's fucking dust bunnies in the wet paint, you imbecile. Chubby babies. John Wiedemann backed slowly away from the dog, tied up in front of 126 East Main Street. The Lazards had a rangy old lop-eared mutt. This dog, wearing the same collar, he noted, worn brown leather with a brass medallion, Pepper, was an irritable toy poodle, dyed pink, the sort of frou-frou show dog, the sort of frou-frou, the frou-frou, the frou-frou, the frou-frou show dog Dan Lazar might go out of his way to hit with his jeep, but never own. Certainly not tie up in the front yard for everyone to see. Maybe Betty's mother is visiting, he thought. Maybe it's her dog. But he didn't believe it. And the worry line between his shaggy eyebrows deepened. Another item added to a list, and we'd have been hunched away, no longer looking to the left or right, no longer taking in every detail of his walk. The town of South Haven was small but comfortable. The town of South Haven was small but comfortable. It had a tannery that employed over half the town, a school, two congregational churches, a few shops, a defunct railway depot, and homes nearly as old as the town itself. The tannery, home of Wyatt Belts, nearly closed in the 80s. But largely, South Haven was a town free from typical 21st century anxiety. There hadn't been a school shoo 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 shooting since a hunting rifle accidentally went off. Shoo 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 shooting since a hunting rifle. There hadn't been a school shooting since a hunting rifle accidentally went off on the first day of deer season in 1943. No one seemed too interested in smoking pot. They had only as many teen pregnancies as the local church charities could handle. There was no town drunk. As such, the rumor mill was often bored into spinning ever more fanciful yarns, being ever more fanciful yarns, being ever more fanciful yarns, being ever more fanciful yarns. One paragon of this network, one Agnes Agnes, being ever more fanciful yarn, Agnes 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 Longbottom by name, took to hanging out at the Main Street Diner, holding court with the other old farts gathered there. I hear tell he's a millionaire, she said. Ah, but I've seen his house, said Sam Snell, retired mail carrier for the town. It ain't much to write home about. Maybe not, she said. But have you ever seen the inside? Well, no. There you go, then, she said. Agnes. Agnes, being ever more fanciful, being ever more fanciful yarn. Agnes, Agnes. The town had only one eccentric, a garrulous old man named Wiederman. Eccentric, being ever more fanciful yarn. The town had only one eccentric. A garrulous old man named Wiederman, who circumnavigated the town on foot every morning, rain, snow, or shine. Have a nice day. Thanks. When I heard the music, I was moved. I actually had a goddamn physiological response. You hear what I'm saying? I throw it about swole clothes. My heart fluttered. My stomach dropped like a plummet down the Matterhorn. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever heard. And the last time I heard old Foggy play. The last time I heard old Foggy play. The man, the wild-eyed Santa Claus man. Chubby babies, chubby babies, chubby babies. The house was spooky. Not Ghost of the Living Dead spooky, more dotty old lady spooky. It gave me the willies to be there nonetheless. But it was my job to deliver meals to all the old folks on the route, and Granny Jinx and her dry old cookies were just one more meal. Spooky, 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 spooky. Do not believe I was, I was a lucky one. With a satisfied grunt, she ripped pure hatred like potato chips deep inside, an image older than his grandparents. What the fuck is my least what the favorite? Fuck is my least favorite you pulled? Suddenly, I imagine a goon like a contrail. Mr. Puff Puff plops under my seat. Song and glass and tinned ham. Other worlds. What? On our shoulders, the esoteric mysteries of the bathroom afoot tonight. Have a nice day. Have she a nice screamed. day. She screamed, and on my doorstep, a vaudevillian with breasts like clockwork. The beginning that wasn't important. Quite straight. Rub her nose. Stranger things, trying to lighten the silence, were evil. I see you. Every detail, as many teens dry, old. old. You hear what I'm you saying? You hear what I'm saying? End chapter one. By the book. Do it now. Now. License created. Commons. Two thousand seven.